Hi guys, um, haven't done this for a while, uh, but I'm doing uh, a very uh, unusual project for me and I figure I'm gonna do visual notes. Um, maybe that would be interesting to you as well. So this is my sketch of a trench coat that I wanted to make and uh, I'm loosely basing it on a Bottega Veneta coat that is completely bonded, but um, of course, I don't have that technology uh, at home and uh, I figure I'm going to do a combination of bonding and seam, regular seam stitching. So um, let me show you all the materials that I'm going to be using and how I'm getting to that point or trying to get to that point. So here's the sketch of my coat. Everything that you see, the dotted lines, this is what's happening inside. So if you pay attention only to these lines, you see that there is not much going on with this coat. It's super clean, except there is a waste detail where that's going to be gathered, but everything else, there's no seaming. There's raw edge at the collar and at the lapel and everything like ham, and sleeve ham is going to be sealed as well. Uh, another thing that um, I am doing is I am sealing additionally um, on the inside, I am sealing all the seams with uh, the seam sealing tape. Uh, and by the way, thank you guys for telling me what this is called. I remember I um, posted a picture of one of the trench coats I was working on and they had this detail and uh, a couple of you replied and I said it's just called uh, seam, uh, yeah, seam sealing tape. Uh, I think usually they're waterproof and uh, I actually was able to find one without knowing that I found one when one of the sample rooms was closing. I just grabbed some rolls of tape thinking that I'm gonna bind something with it, but it turned out to be the sealing tape. When I paid more attention to it, like you could, um, maybe it's hard to see, but one surface looks like fabric and on the other side it actually looks like it's rubberized. So once I put the iron, on it, it melted, it sealed, and it stayed. So I had a, I had the tape as well, so I could move on with this project. I had this cotton to use. Uh, it was a sample yardage from one of my previous works that um, I never used, and I figured it would be a good um, material to try this on. And for bonding, I used this material. So it looks like, I think it's called the stitch witchery or something like this, but it's basically comes by the yard. I'm getting this, uh, if you are in New York, Guide Fabrics have all of these goodies. I mean, this is where I get my muslin. You have different weights of muslins. These are your interfacings, these are hymos and needle points. I mean, that's all the insides for the jacket. And these two are the glue, basically. Uh, there is one that's much lighter, but I use this one. So um, I think it would hold better. And I tried it with an iron and it worked. And then I have um, a heat press at work and um, I basically reheated everything after, and I think it holds pretty well. Uh, only time will tell uh, how well it's going to hold eventually, like after wear. Uh, but for now, it looks clean, and uh, I'm gonna show you what the color and color stand look like after I treated it. And here's my color and color stand. I already put it together. Um, it took me a while to figure out how uh, to put it together. I decided to actually overlap it and seam it from one side and from another side. Uh, but before that, I actually had the seam allowances. I had no idea what I was going to do with um, this project, but once I bonded these pieces, 
I made a template uh, because I decided to go with raw edges and um, this is what like basically what I did. I overlapped it and I trimmed it to my desired shape and um, it's nice and uniform and clean. And for my trench I made two uh, templates for the color, especially the edge and for the lapel as well. Everything else is as a straight line so I don't need a template for this. And here are my sleeves. Uh, for their back seam, I decided to use a flat fell seam. I always like flat fell seam because they look so clean from the inside. Uh, but for my front seam, I actually just closed it, pushed it to one side, and then I bonded everything with that sealing tape. And after that, I pressed the ham sleeve and also bonded it with the tape. So it's looking really, really good on the inside right now. I, I'm actually liking it a lot more on the inside than outside. And next I'm gonna show you the body on the form. And here's the body on the form. It's from the insides. So this is why you see all the seams are being taped you could see the clean edge this piece is bonded with that glue that i was showing you uh, all the bottom edges are bonded i'm not sure what i'm gonna do with the pockets yet but for whatever reason i bonded the inside no one's gonna see it it's probably going to be tacked maybe with the tape uh, to the front piece, but I need to do the waist first. So what I'm gonna do with the waist uh, This is what it looks like from the back and What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be gathering The outer shell and I'm gonna be setting it into this way so it's much smaller so I, I still have to figure out how to do this in the uniform fashion. So it's the left and right is going to look together, but uh, going to look right. Um, but it's this piece that is going to be holding the whole structure together. So this is what it looks like for now. Um, and uh, after I set the color and right now I even have the shoulders pinned because I think it's going to be easier to work with the waist when it's completely flat but uh, once I of course close the seams on the shoulders I can set the collar and I can start pressing the roll line so it stays together and I have no idea if this is going to be a comfortable coat or not uh, but maybe it's gonna look cool so we'll see